joining the um, Are You Looking for a Roommate session. My name is Ilaria Peavy and I'm the Housing and Arrival Coordinator. So some of you uh, might already know me because uh, perhaps you sent me an email or we had a couple of appointments together. Um, so um, with me, there's also a couple of other people that I will introduce uh, later on. So um, just to, oops, I can change my slides. Here we go. So just to give you the heads up, uh, you join the session with your microphone muted. So it just avoids any uh, background noise or interruptions. But you can ask any questions by using the chat and Jenny is here to take any questions. And so um, if for any reason your question is an answer during the session itself, please send me an email uh, to uh, housing at nscc.ca. That will work. Um, our presentation today is being recorded. And I think that it's very important to start uh, by welcoming all of you from Turtle Island, which is also known as Canada, as I speak for Mi'kmaq, which is the unceded territory and ancestral homeland of the Mi'kmaq Nation. This territory is covered by the Treaties of Peace and Friendship, which um, were signed both by the British, British Crown in 1725 and the Mi'kmaq and Wolostoric Maliset people. It's it's really important and it's a very important part of your journey to Canada and to Nova Scotia to learn more about the Mi'kmaq nation and its rich culture. And even if you already are in Canada, it's still equally important to learn about this. Um, and I thought to include some resources in the presentation itself that you will receive if you if you want. It's not a problem. And so you can use the links and, and start learning um, or keep learning a bit more. I have three main goals for this session. So one is really to show you some platforms where you can find roommates, um, specifically roommates, I would say they are NSCC students. So there's lots of platforms out there where you can find roommates. Um, there are students from other um, institutions or universities or um, or not students at all. But we're, here we're really focusing on students, NSCC students that could become your roommates. I also want to share some, um, I'm hoping some helpful documentation so that you can have a better understanding of what to look for when you're looking for roommates, like the things to know, to avoid and so on. And then we have two NSCC students, which I will introduce later, that um, are here to talk about their experiences as roommates and with roommates. So we're very lucky um, about this. So um, some of you might be familiar with placesforstudents.com. Um, it's a free platform and it's a platform that NSCC is using to uh, support any listings. So on Places for Students, you can find listings for rooms or sometimes apartments. But what I really want to show you is how you can open an account to find roommates. So I'm just quickly going to share my, um, I hope you can still see it, not showing the presentation, but the website. So it has this logo, Places for Students. And then here, if you want, and I would really strongly um, suggest that you do so, that you um, log in and create an account. But just to quickly see how do you actually look up for, even for your school, you will put the um, Nova Scotia Community College here in this field, click on go, and then you should have, you should have a list of all the schools and places. So you see here you have all the listings, sublets sometimes, and then roommates. So I'm just going to pick one, um, say IT. So if you're going to the IT campus and you're looking for a roommate, it's all public, so I definitely can share this. You have a few um, roommates that posted their profile. So the way it works, again, I'm just picking whichever, is you might or might decide not to um, put a picture if you want, um, utilities that you would like to have included, where you're looking for, um, you, how are you going to be contacted and so on in your preferences, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's it's really a good and valuable tool. If you're looking for NSCC roommates, please use it because it's something that um, will help you um, to find a person. So. The second tool I would like to show you, and it might look a little bit more complicated, but I do think it is, it's our ISENT app. So I hope that many of you are familiar with the ISENT app. Um, this would be the logo. And I'm, I've included a couple of screenshots because um, I really want to be sure that you are in the right place. Starting from the first screenshot over here, many students I find are using NSCC study and stay. So 
be sure that you're using the NSCC International Students um, app. And I would say if there are any domestic students on the call, um, you can still have access to the to the ISEN app. You just you you just have to use your um, W number, and then um, some of the content will not be of any relevance to you, like the immigration information, uploading your documents. But still, as a domestic student, you could have access to the housing um, component of the app or even the chat function. So still. Um, you're still welcome to use it. When you are sure that you open the NSCC International Student um, iSent app and you're on the right thing, if you click on the chat icon, sometimes students find it confusing because if they've never started a conversation with anyone, what they see is just chat and no conversation. So they're like, the chat function doesn't work. It does work. You just have to dig a little bit deeper. So if you know the person that you are that you would like to, to start chatting with, um, you can just look up in the search function and then search for the user. Of course, we, we had to um, we'll just cancel the others, but this would be um, populated with names of students who are currently using the app. And many students say, you know, Larry, I don't know anyone because I'm a new student and I'm using the chat to connect with students, which is fair enough. So if you don't know how to search, what you can do is that you can hit this sort of like um, menu, like these three dashes, and then this last page will appear. And so in the last page, you will see that there's campus, program and citizenship. So say that you're going to the Akerley campus, you click to campus and you say, I want to know who's going to the Akerley campus. And the moment that you flag this, you will have a couple of students appearing or saying, I really want to learn about people going to my, um, say, studying cosmetology, perhaps in my campus or perhaps no. I just want to know what they feel about the program. Then you can select program and this will appear. Or um, say that you really want to, to find people based on their citizen, citizenship or place of, of country of origin and say, I want to find all the students coming from whatever country. And then you click on there and this is how you will connect. So the, the students who are in the in the chat who've signed up to be part of the chat are students that really want to um I would say that they are curious to to start any conversation. So don't be shy. There's nothing wrong in saying, you know, hi, I'm going to this campus. Um, you know, would you like to share some, I don't know, to chat with me and just um, maybe we meet when we're there or something like this. So it's not really an issue. Don't be too shy and and really feel welcome to use the chat. Jenny, are there any questions at all? No? No, ma'am, none yet. OK, perfect. So um, other two things I would like to show you are the roommate agreement and the core in the chore wheel. So they look they are two documents that I thought would be uh, perhaps supportive and then just um, helpful. Um, the roommate agreement would be this one. So I have to say, when I speak to students, very often um, arguments or disputes happen um, when there's a bit of a, a disagreement on really basic, basic um, things that could be solved and um, we could all avoid problems. That could be um, cleaning or cleanliness or what is clean for me perhaps is not clean to you or noise, you know, music, sleeping hours, um, having guests uh, overnight or not, safety and security or physical property. So the agreement, say it's a sort of guideline that I'm hoping will support you um, to just to, yeah, to guide a conversation to see what's important to you and to the, and the roommate or roommates. And so that you can identify that your um, leaving preferences and perhaps differences and how you can um, perhaps make some compromises. So one, uh, a big thing I would say um, is the study time. So if your study time is in the morning, um, because you really wake up early and you prefer studying in the morning and then you go to work or something else in, in the afternoon and the roommate um, you're living with is doing opposite shifts, try to sort of agree um, on, on when you can study um, and what's allowed when when one of you is studying. So, for example, the television is on, the music and so on. So you find that this document is super detailed and it, it doesn't mean that if you're clicking on and then the TV is ever on for once, an argument is going to happen. But it, it really helps you to define um, your living uh, preference, I would say. Cleaning is a big deal as well. 
are you going to uh, perhaps look after and take care of your own mess or are you going to, um, which would be nice, but are you also going to alternate um, who's cleaning common areas or like maybe I, week, uh, I clean every Monday, you clean every Saturday or I clean every week and you clean every every other week. So it's important you, you discuss these things, even um, buying cleaning supplies, for example, uh, using the bathroom is also a big thing. So if you're both um, talking about two, but say, ideally, but I don't think there's many apartments that will have perhaps more than two bathrooms. But like if you have a common, if you have your own bathroom, that's great. If you're sharing a bathroom, it's very important that you decide how um, is it going to shed? Are you going to take one hour in the morning and then the other person needs to wait? That's not very nice. So compromise and, and, and talk to each other and ask. Quiet hours, sleeping time, same thing. Discuss a few things as well. Um, kitchen use and cooking times. Um, are you going to cook together? Are you having um, a time perhaps when you cook and the other person doesn't? Um, are you going to share food? Are you going to buy some food in common or are you going to keep everything separate and so on? Um, private property and personal property. Is it okay for someone to use perhaps your computer or cookware or food and so on? So I'm just going to leave it here and I will make sure that all of you um, who requested um, can have it available. And so it's it's useful. It's not a legal document, I just want to say it. It's just something that really helps you when you're sitting down and having a conversation with any roommate. You could sign it. And I think that by signing it, you um, you demonstrate that you, you have a commitment and, you, and you're doing your best to, to stay up to the standards, but it's not a legal um, document in this sense. And the second, um, sort of document I wanted to, to say and you could just to share and, and you could just put it perhaps on your fridge or something it's um, a, a sort of like a cleaning tidy up schedule so um, it helps especially if you've never rented before and many students for example think I'm using the kitchen I'm doing the dishes that's fantastic but how about cleaning the fridge um, you know sweeping the floors and all these things that need to be done and then if you don't do for a couple of weeks and then a couple of months, they really pile up and they become a big problem. So um, keep it in mind. And then you might want to um, think about, you know, one week one person is taking care of things and the other week the other person is taking care of things. Or you might do it together or um, you will find a way to to figure things out. But it's it's again a guideline that could be helpful, like living room, common spaces and bathroom. Who's going to clean what? So in this sense. Um, I would say that this is all for me and I just have the pleasure right now to introduce two students so if you don't mind putting your cameras on that's um, that's perfect. I'm going to um, leave the presentation in a second, well the slides of the presentation in a second so my camera will also be on and we, we, we will engage in a conversation but just to introduce um, Elisa and the other students, so Anna Lima, um, I would say stay on Elisa um, for one second so I can I, I can read out aloud uh, who she is. She's an international student from Jamaica studying IT uh, generalist and in, in the second year and she's a campus housing assistant and for what concerns Ana Lima, she, the mayor, she is an international student from Brazil. She's studying geographic, sorry, graphic design also in her second year and she lived at the Atlantic School of Theology um, on campus housing. So uh, very different experiences and I hope, yes, yeah, they were all here. Fantastic. So I would like to hear from like your experiences. Um, whoever wants to start is really the same. Um, but could you tell me how is it living with roommates and they could be family or friends or anyone? Um, so growing up, I had an older sister, but she moved away when I was much younger. So I kind of grew up as an only child. So I had the freedom of like my own space and everything, which was great. And then I moved to Nova Scotia and I thought the best thing for me was to move on campus and which my campus ended up being straight area, which is on Cape Breton Island. And it was great. I was excited to have new roommates. I was excited to have that friendship, that bond that everyone talks about when you have like your roommates. And we initially got in, they were really sweet, very nice. And it like it lasted probably two, three weeks. What yeah. happened then? So we had the roommate agreement, which everyone has to do on campus when you're living with roommates. And 
everything was fine. We had agreed that, oh, okay, so at least because I'm a chef, so I cook and they clean the dishes or wash up or anything. And then we do communal clean up together. And any food that was in the kitchen was free to, for anybody to use. So I was like, okay, cool. If I cook, you know, it's great for me because I would be able to just be, do a one big pot and cook, cook for everybody. And I think it was Thanksgiving. Oh, my, one of the roommates ended up getting a boyfriend two weeks into living on campus. And he also lived on campus and had roommates as well. And apparently his roommates that I didn't know had a rule that no partner could come and sleep over. So that ended up falling on us and he slept over every day. He was over every day. They were drinking every day. They were loud games, all of that every night. And it was difficult for me because they were in a program that was a little bit lenient. There was like a, a, not a lot of coursework and stuff like that. And then I was in an IT program that had me doing work till two o'clock in the morning. So it was very difficult for me. And Thanksgiving day, my roommates went home and I decided that, okay, well, they're gonna come back and it's gonna be a little late. So I'll just cook a big pot of pasta for everyone so that we could all eat. Everyone's food was used. My sauce was used. Um, one of my roommates, her mom normally goes to Costco. So she has like a bunch of pasta. And then the same roommate's chicken was used. And I thought I did a good job. I thought I was fine. One of them comes home and I was like, oh, hey, there's pasta on the stove. If you want any, you know, you're free to take, of course, because it's all of our food that was used. And she was like, yeah, that's fine. I'm good. Mommy packed food. And I was like, OK, cool. And then the other roommate comes back and apparently something happened between her parents and the boyfriend and her during Thanksgiving. And she came back in a mood and lashed out. And she lashed out silently. So she didn't tell me that she was upset that anything happened. And it built up to our resentment. So every little thing that I was doing or any little thing that I said to her, because of our culture, my joking style might be a little bit different or certain words that I use might not mean the same harshness as her. So she built all of this upset or you know, this disagreement with, in, with me in her own self and then wanted to have a roommate. I asked one of the room, the other roommates, I was like, hey, is there a problem? Like, can we talk it out? And she's like, oh, no, no, no problem. I don't have a problem. I'm good. And then we had a roommate meeting with our RA at the time, our coordinator, because I didn't feel comfortable. I was already complaining about things happening. She'd go to the supermarket and take the other roommate and not take me. And I was like, that's kind of harsh because you kind of told me that this is what we do. Like we agreed that, you know, if we're going to supermarket, we'd all go together because we're all living together. Like I'm fine. And she started excluding me. We used to go on group trips with everyone. So we had a group in on campus. So we used to go on group trips. We used to go fishing. We used to went, we went up to the Cabot Trail. All of a sudden, I was always excluded. I was never asked if I wanted to go. I was never asked if I needed to go to the supermarket nothing like that and there were times when I would put a cup in the sink and they had dirty dishes piled up and they'd wash everything and leave my cup to the side and then put my cup back in once they finished washing up and I noticed that and I'm like that's kind of petty if you know something is wrong let me know and so I brought in the coordinator we had a, a meeting and that one roommate basically spoke for both of them, how I was behaving like a child. It was it was a very harsh, attackive kind of situation. And from there, I decided that, OK, we're going to set boundaries. You know, all of your food is your food. I won't touch anything, anything that you have bought, anything that you bring into the house. I won't touch. I no longer want your partner coming over. All of that that kind of made me feel uncomfortable was no longer allowed. And she didn't care. She had no care in the world. She still did all of the things afterwards. I decided that fine, I'll wash my dishes. I have no problem. And so I started, I started doing back what she did to me, but in a nicer way. 
And it felt it was difficult because both of them had houses two or three hours away. I had nobody. I only had myself and a partner at the time who I was dating. So, and that partner lived in Jamaica. So they'd come back from home and come back with suitcases, with big bags of Costco goods, stuff the cupboard, stuff the fridge. And then I had no space for any of my stuff. And there was no care. Eventually, thankfully, I ended up being a campus housing assistant for the second semester of my first year. And I was moved into my own space. And I, I was now able to regulate all the disagreements with the roommates on campus. But I think an important lesson for me was that in the beginning, it might seem that you guys are all best friends, but it's still important to set your boundaries from that day. Because when it's not set from the beginning and problems start arising, it's hard for them to go back to that best body kind of feeling or environment. No, it's 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 great feedback and it's great. Um, I've, it's usually the the issue I find with many students who, when they arrive, they're really in a, in a rush to find any roommates because you know school is starting and they want to find a, you know arrange a range of room and then they don't discuss things. Or they want to be perhaps uh, very nice and sort of like good good friends and they don't set the boundaries. And then there's so many you know what you, what you were describing perhaps could have been avoided with like little bits of more communication you know this is a bit annoying perhaps do this better and so on and so it's really important to have better communication especially when you're coming from different cultures because as you were saying something that for you perhaps was an innocent joke for them maybe wasn't so it would be important to open your heart and say what exactly do you mean you know like I feel a slightly offended should I or not so I invite all of you to be very open because the more open you are the better it is and then um and then you avoid situations and many students end up wanting to uh, so many students have amazing uh, roommates experiences and, and they become truly best friends so uh, but some others would just be um you know september found a room together or or a room in a shared apartment and by november i would like to move out and i really wonder like this we're talking about great people is just together without communication um sometimes can be a little bit hard so it's uh, it's great and it's exactly the experience that I wanted to hear because it's, it's good that we're hearing great experiences and not so great experiences. It's part of life. Um, you know, you were living on campus and you were able to make some arrangements. But for some people who are signing a, a joint agreement and the agreement is a one year agreement in the housing crisis that we have right now, where you're finding a spot and you really want to keep it. It's so much better to set the boundaries earlier and then to have a great um, time together than having to move out and then it might take you months before you're moving out so it's um it was really nice to hear from you um Anna, would you like to say how, how about you was your experience yeah sure you can something? you hear yes. me yes yeah okay. perfect <laughs> so uh so i well, i lived in a student residence and i share a room with my sister and like kitchen and bathroom was with everybody in the same floor, which was about 15 girls. So it's a lot. Um, I think the best part of it is the people that I met. I made truly friends there. I just move out, but I keep uh, talking with some people that I met there. So it's good. It's great, especially when we arrive here in Canada. We don't know anybody right so it's good to make friends and uh but sometimes some things are challenged for sure so even like sharing a bedroom with my sister is not so easy especially because everything that we have it's inside the bedroom so we need to organize all the time it was a huge bedroom but even like this we need to keep our food inside you know all our stuff it's uh, it needs to be like organized all the time, you know, to work. Um, and the rest of the house, uh, we had some maintenance guy that cleans the bathroom, which helps a lot. But we were responsible for the kitchen, and I think that was the most like that gives more problem, as Alisa told, like happen a little bit of the same sometimes. Uh, first thing is everybody should put the name on the food, 
I always put the name on my food and I think it helps because otherwise I wouldn't know if it's mine, if it's somewhere else, but some people just don't put the name and then they keep asking, oh, is it mine or it's not? Or someone ate my food, but there's no name. So like you cannot complain, you know? <laughs> so I think um, you need to be aware of that if you're sharing a kitchen with other people and each one's gonna buy f food separate, it's better to put the name so you know which belongs to each one, right? And the cleanest parts, I think is the hardest one for the kitchen because yeah, of course you should cook and wash your dishes, but sometimes some people say, oh, I will gonna wash it later and then forget. And you don't have the name in your dirty dishes, right? So it's complicated especially when it's a lot of people like when it's two or three you have like you know a little better but when it's a lot it's complicated but um in the end like sometimes we complain sometimes people leave notes like please wash it or wash fast next time instead of wait some hours to do it but it's always like always gonna have something dirty and no one gonna clean for the others, otherwise they're gonna do it all the time, you know? So I think that's the worst problem in sharing space. Um, other than that, I think like money, it's really worth it, right? So I arrived in Canada, we have a lot of um, COVID restrictions yet. So it was good for me that the place was furniture. I didn't need to worry about that and of course it's cheaper than just rent apartment by my own now i just moved to apartment that i'm going to share with my sister and a friend my friend just arrives in august so we don't have this full experience of roommates like other experience but roommates even again but um it's better because we have our own bedroom and we already talk a lot about it and said like we're going to schedule um, a cleaning schedule for share what we need to do at the house. I think the best thing is just like talk, of course. If you talk, you can avoid a lot of problems. So I think that's the. Um, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's all about sometimes it's communication really and talking and then and you could also say like I'm going to have a very busy week this time so um, because of work or school commitment so I will barely be at home I will I won't I won't really be able to, to do perhaps as much as I was doing but letting people know instead of not letting them know it at all and then um, little problems build up so I would say this um, and there are some some students who decide to have roommates and um, and as, as you were share you you were saying they become really great friends and then they, they divide the cost of rent as well and so on so um how about those friendships that you that you formed how how did it happen like did you all meet together in a common place did you cook together or how was it and both of you like at least i'm sure that you also met others people you know that was a less positive experience but i'm sure that you also met um you know um some someone that uh, maybe became your friend so if you want to, to talk about that too Okay, uh, most, well, we had a common living room as well, but most of the time we met at the kitchen and we start talking like why we are cooking or something like that. And um, yeah, I think just like seeing the person every day and start to talk and then we start to go to closest place and then yeah, <laughs> we become friends. But we had a common room and that was good because sometimes we could go in the night and talk and sometimes watch a movie, you know, it, it was a good place to, to meet people. And I think like uh, at the first like days, everybody's a little bit shy, but after you start to talk, you, you start to meet other people, it's great. And everybody's in the same situation, you know, everybody's alone here. So it's good to, to talk and to meet other people. Sure. Yeah. I think for me it was good because our campus was small. It was around 45 to 50 students. 
um, and they were all pretty close to the same age. I was probably the oldest at, no, oh no, I was in the group of probably five people being the oldest. I was 26. My roommates were 19 and 20. So it was very difficult, but we still found ways to connect. Um, I have one roommate that I still talk to this to this day. Like we still message, we still, oh my God, I miss you. I can't wait to go back to campus so that we can hang out and do our movie dates again. So it's really nice. Um, of course, we spoke about the situation and she was like, yeah, it wasn't really me. You know, the other roommate kind of was like edging certain things on. And you know, when someone keeps talking about it, then it kind of starts becoming a problem for you too as well. But apart from that, we're we're really, really close. We're probably best friends. Um, a lot of people on campus, I had another guy that used that was from the bar, um, Barbados and he also had nobody in Canada or in Nova Scotia. So we bonded on that as well. And we were close for the whole entire semester. Then he left. Um, but it was it was easy. A lot of them had the same interest fishing. So most of the girls just to kind of get out of the up, out of the the building, we went fishing as well. So we'd go mackerel fishing by the the dock, yeah. which was pretty which was pretty good. Um, thankfully, I also had one of my classmates because I have, I have an online <laughs> program. <laughs> so one of my classmates happened to live five minutes down the road from me, and it was really good because like when I was going through hard times or just mental problems or you know mental health because of yes. you know winter and everything. He'd be like, okay, I'm going to go on the road now. Do you want to come with me? And I'm like, yeah, please. <laughs> Thanks. So stuff like that. And, you know, when I was leaving to come back to Toronto for my to my mom's sister, he was like, oh, I'll drop you to the airport. Or do you need help moving out or anything like that? So it was good having that support system that you never thought you would have with a lot of your roommates or a lot of friends that you build. Um, and as we've always said, communication is key to keep that good friendship going. And it is important because I feel like I find that once you leave college with this friendship, some of them are going to be in the same area, living in the same area. And as Anna did, you know, you grew up and rent outside of outside of the campus or out on housing as well again and it's so much better it's so cheap it's like the cheaper the better because you don't want to be working hard and then spending it in rent you know what I mean you want to still be able to have time to go on adventures time to take time for yourself and stuff like that but choosing the right roommate is the best thing to do from the start sometimes you don't have an option and that's where communication comes in play yes no, yes. Yeah, I think like communication is the key, of course, and also respect, especially if you're dealing with people from other countries, because it's really different from what you used to. So it's always respect, think, try to think that if you were the person, how you'd like to to behave with them, you know, and uh, communicate. I think that's it. I have a question for you too. So uh, you you both lived on campus, but let's imagine that you um, are um, again moving out and you're looking for roommates and you use sites that could be uh, places for students, but it could also be Facebook, social media, Kijiji. We know that the housing situation is quite um, problematic at the moment. So I would say use whatever you know um, you can to, to find roommates. How would you screen your roommates in terms of how would you make sure that you're starting well? And I shouldn't use the word screen, but like screen for interest. That's what I meant. Like how can you, yeah. how do you um, make sure that um, the people that you're, you're going to meet and say, I have a room and a place that would be good matches? That's probably um, my question. I think it's best at that point to be a social butterfly. So if someone's reaching out to you, it's that they want, they, they see something in you that they want to live with you. So to treat it as an interview, you know, you're interviewing someone to come into your space, to come into your house, to live with you, to co-exhibit with you. You're going to spend months in snow, you know, snowstorms, all of that together. You have to put that on the, on the forefront. You have to put, oh, you know, I have stress with work or I, so that they know, you know, we both know what we're going to come into. I'm someone who doesn't handle stress well, or I'm someone who, you know, 
when I'm stressing, I clean, like I deep clean the entire place and I just want to be left alone. My one of my other roommate is like that. She'll put in her headphones and she'll just start wiping down the walls. And I'm like, what are you doing? It's three o'clock in the morning. She's like, I'm stressed. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> right. So an interview with a person or chatting video call virtual if you can't meet in person is so important because that's how you actually get to understand and know that person. Thanks. Okay, so I'm gonna have a roommate soon, right? And uh, we met online. Like, we talked for a really long time, but we don't know in person yet. So I think, well, uh, she's from the same country as me, so she's also from Brazil. That's something that's help. Of course, doesn't need to be, but helps because we can talk better in Portuguese than in English so far. <laughs> and um, also, I think, like, have almost the same age as well in the student residence. Most people was way younger than me as well. So have almost the same age uh, from the same country makes it easier as well and talk a lot before I come, you know, so you you know the person better. I think that's the things. Yeah. And another question from you um, from a say like safety perspective you know I think we all of us whenever we were looking for housing there's always this sort of like the renters come and something very sketchy that happens to us and then some some of us um are lucky enough to detect it early and some of us they're not and so and so it leads to further problems but when for I'm thinking about my experience when I was looking for roommates I wanted to disclose certain things because I wanted to be sure that the roommate that would approach me had the same interest and so on. But it was also a fine balance between telling and not telling too much. So how do you protect yourself in that sense? Because, yes, you're going to post something in places for students. It's fairly perhaps um, a bit safer than other places, but you're also going to use um, maybe, um, you know, um, Gigi or Facebook Marketplace or any other site. So the web really so how do you um how do you find the balance i think it's important to gauge what you expose to the public i'm in cyber security as well for work so i am very cautious as to what i put out there because it stays out there um and the world unfortunately is a very dark place sometimes and people take advantage of the information we put out there so like t my telephone number i'd never put out you know Unfortunately, there's some jobs when you apply, you have to put your telephone number out, but stuff like that. Um, I'd, I'd probably do an email, use a specific email. So if you have an email that you just use for like, you know, your subscriptions or for school, so your school email, use that and allow them to come to you from through there because it can be screened better. And then when you feel more comfortable with, OK, we've been talking through email for a while. I'm, I feel more comfortable giving this person, you know, my personal email or my personal telephone number so that we can continue this conversation and we can get more personal in, in what we speak about, you know, stuff like that, um, kind of gauging from the conversations with each other, talk about pet peeves, talk about, you know, certain experiences so that I can kind of gauge, okay, so that's what their reaction was to that experience or that story that I told about something that happened in my home country kind of tells me how they would react if certain things happened to me or talk about, you know, the world events, talk about what's going on in the world right now and see what their their reaction is, because then it gives you a sense as to if this was to happen to us or this was to happen to nearby, you know, how would they react? What would their flight fight or flight reaction be okay so that's something really that everyone needs to be worried about uh, that was actually one of the main reasons that i choose to live in the student residence before i remember that i found this place in one of uh, nsec like ebooks or something about housing and uh, it was a university as well, right? It belongs to a university. So it's somewhere that I trust it exists and it's safe, you know? Because uh, before I came here and if, 
especially because of COVID, I was not sure what day I will arrive because they are changing flights all the time. And if um, I would need to quarantine or not. And well, it was really confused before I came. And uh, I decided I had a safe place, furniture, and that um, I was afraid to rent a place like that I couldn't, that I didn't know the person and I didn't know if it was for real. But like, I would say try to talk with the person, try to do a video chat showing the place that you're renting. I think that's things that you can do to make sure it's for sure. I didn't have a lot of information about the place that I rent, but as it belongs to your university, I trust that it was true. But for example, I didn't know, I didn't have any picture about the room or the common space, you know, they don't have a lot of information line and that's kind of annoying, but uh, like I trust because of the university actually. Yes, and, and the reality for many students would be that they can't really find um, on campus housing. So um, last year we had many students that were arriving, like some, even the universities where you were, they had online programs. And so it was a little bit easier to find perhaps a spot. But this year would be very different. So I really think that it's important to do what you said. So to, to try to expose yourself, but not too much and be very considerate about what you're saying. Even um, I would say pictures, you know, you don't have to really post a picture uh, about yourself. But if you decide to sort with care so because whatever goes out there um, stays out there as you were saying Lisa so um, and also try to do um, when you've touched base perhaps with a medium that is an email as you're saying just starting to see how the conversation goes there might be a moment where you want to do a video call or just even um, view in the place so my advice for all the students who are looking and um, they're perhaps finding a room before them they they actually are in, in Nova Scotia would be to at the very least do um, a video call of the place, not just pictures, but a video call of the place before you commit into signing or paying anything. It's so important because you really, before you're paying something, you really have to have a very good feeling that the place is solid and exists and you can trust the people. So if that's not an option for you, perhaps look for temporary accommodation and then you will start looking when you're here, but just to be very careful with that. Um, I see there are two um, guests and then they probably join a little bit later. So when I, I've already, I had already said that, um, we're joining the conversation in, in muted mode. I can't unmute. That's the rule for the webinar. But if you have any questions that you'd like to ask me or Elisa or Anna, please put them in the chat. We still have some time to uh, to answer. And so um, don't hesitate to do that. Otherwise, I'm going to perhaps just put in the chat my email. So if there's anything that comes out um, later, it will be good if you send me an email. Housing. I have one other point to add. Yes, absolutely about environment safety as well so what was important for me as well because outside of looking at campus housing I was looking at apartments as well and I think one thing that was really important to me was doing a google search of both addresses so the address of the, the campus and the address of the actual unit and seeing how far away it is you know if it's on a, if there's a main road that I can walk on to go to school instead of side roads, because as a female, you know, the anxiety of being alone in a country that your parents or your family members aren't is very difficult. And as it's like, OK, well, and also what, what I did was I searched through NSCC to see if they had a safe walk, which meant that someone from the campus would walk with you if you live like 50 minutes maximum to your apartment building or the train station or the bus stop and stuff like that. And then also just looking at what the bus routes were. Um, kind of, I kind of viewed the bus routes for, I think, two months. So just to kind of see what the delays were, what, you know, if they had construction on the site constantly, if something always happened. It, it was like an accident um, prone road so that, you know, detours and stuff like that. So I understood the area that I was living in. And I knew what kind of environment I was going to step into. Um, if I can add That's a, small, a small piece. Sure, yes. Um, I just, when you mentioned safety and walking, 
if you approach the security guards at your campus and you need to be walked to your car, sometimes there's evening classes or in the winter it can get very dark. If you're not comfortable with the lighting, etc., you can always ask your campus security to walk you to your car. Yes, yes. Um, oh, I think we have a perhaps a question in the chat. Yes, so that's a problem if you join late, that's okay. Um, so they're asking, they're in Ontario, and what's the best way to find housing with people looking for roommates? So um, I would say um, if you want, well, if you send me an email, I can send even more information and some sites and so on. But um, I would say um, you could try on places for students, you can try on Kijiji, you could try on Facebook Marketplace as well. Um, it's all about being a little bit careful in terms of the people that you um, are going to to meet and just to to see that um, they will be good matches and so on. Um, because your experience is different, um, you both um, basically went to um, like either it was a university or NSCC of campus housing. So I feel like this question are probably is being answered through the web to the web the, to the session itself, and I, I feel like a probably a one-on-one -on -one appointment would be easier for me to, to show you exactly how you can look for roommates. But in general, it will be online, like unless you, you arrive here from Ontario and then you're staying um, perhaps for a couple of weeks and then you're meeting face-to-face -face with, with people, um, I would say you're starting probably online. And so it would be any website. Um, I know that Facebook Marketplace is even a web um, um, a group um, that is um, a roommate in Nova Scotia, and I'm happy to pass you on the link. So then from there, it will be all about screening and all the, the sort of like the things and rules that we that we said during the, the session. So in that sense, um, one last piece perhaps that we could talk about is um, not just safety, but um, walking around, getting to know your area. So um, ask other people as well, like, um, if you are putting a call out there to become a roommate of somebody and somebody already has an apartment and has a place, don't hesitate to ask them, how is the area where you live? Like if I'm coming home at 10 p.m. Um, with the last bus, so am I safe walking home? And so it's if it's a concern for you, I think that you should ask and then um, getting the feedback from the person who's already living there. Keeping in mind that we all experience things differently depending on our um on how we are in the society, you know, from from gender to um, anything, like there could be cultural background to experiences that we had in life. So there isn't a unique answer. You always have to filter and account for that. If I say this area is very safe, it might just be very safe for me and for what I consider safe. For another person, it could be a completely different story and experience. But you could always ask, and that might be helpful. So in that sense, ask for places um, like if you if you know that you're going to use the, the bus and your roommate um, perhaps has a car and they say grocery stores are really close. Like I go after work and, you know, two minutes is just around the corner. That two minutes with a car it might be 20 minutes walking. And when it's icy, it might be 30 minutes if the bus is not going there. So use Google Maps and always uh, try to understand what will I be doing, taking the bus, walking, um, you could also, to a certain extent, maybe negotiate and do groceries together if you feel comfortable in, in being in a vehicle with somebody else who's driving and perhaps going to Costco once a month or whenever and then splitting groceries. Um, I think everything goes back to talking and asking and communication because you're leaving with another person. It's so important that you um, you try and to be as clear as possible um, with all the nuances of coming from different parts of the globe or, or even even from within Canada. We're all human beings all communicating in different uh, ways, even if, if we're in, in the same um, sort of uh, place. Um, I think this would be it for my um, for my side. I think we, we asked so much um, like from from you, like experience your experiences and so many questions. So unless there's anything that you would like to add, um, I don't see any other questions. So the session is recorded. We'll make sure the students um, have access to it and then perhaps more questions will come um, at another time. But um, anything you should add before we close? You're good? I, th I think the last thing that I want to yes. add, I think is directly to Kelly. It's, um, and for those who are parents who are looking for their, ch their child, um, it's important, as you were talking about the whole grocery store, yeah. um, it is really important. Um, I live, even though I live on campus, 
the walk to the grocery store is like 20, 25 minutes. And during the snow, that's very difficult. And then we live on a hill. So for taxis yes. to get up the hill and down the hill when, when it's snowing, it's very difficult as well. And I never had the luxury of having a Costco because we're three hours away from the nearest Costco. So I think it's really important to be like walking distance near to a supermarket, a pharmacy, any convenience stores, because when it does snow, it 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 gets a little bit challenging, a little bit worse than Ontario. I've lived in both during the winter, so I, I can tell from experience it it gets a lot more challenging. The wind. It's the wind yes. that kills you. <laughs> we know that. So, um, yes. Um, and it's a very good point. I also lived in a place once where um, the first um, you know, grocery store was 25 minutes away and there wasn't even a bus to take me there. It wasn't even in this province, but it meant that in the winter was a 45 minutes, 50 minutes walk. I could have taken the taxi as a student. I was trying to budget on anything and I didn't want to. So I just prefer walking. Um, but you could also share a taxi with, you know, with your roommates. And so you paying less uh, you could always go on Tuesday so you're also saving some money on the groceries so there are ways to get around difficulties but it is very important that you check where you're leaving if you can so uh, yeah. it's really and good good feedback with the taxis even with the taxis you take a taxi there and there's no guarantee they'd be able to come pick you back up you know I for a straight area I'd take a taxi there and I'd call them oh it's gonna be an hour an hour and a half and I'm like I just bought frozen goods. Like I can't wait an hour, hour and a half. <laughs> yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I remember uh, before I booked the place I lived before. I did all the way like through uh, Street View, like how long I would, and yes. how was the the pathway to the bus stop, and how was like with the bus where I need to leave the bus and then. I got the ferry to school every day, so it was not really close for me, but I check everything and Street View and Google Maps is great for that. Yes. And it shows all the bus. Like here in Halifax, it's easier to like yes. use the public transportation, small cities. I know it's harder, but uh, it's really important to check these things as well, for sure. Absolutely. So it's um, it's very good to um, to keep that in mind. Um, yep, so Kelly, um, I invited you to send me an email. I think I left it in the chat. So um, then we will connect specifically about your questions. Um, thank you, all the three of you, um, for being here. Um, and thank you for whoever joined us today and for whoever will join us watching the recording. It's been really a pleasure to help you all. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thank bye. you. Bye. See you. Bye.